Today we're talking about CNC 101 and I'm going to walk you through the basics of the different parts of the machine and talk about what they mean so you can get familiar with the terminology as you're learning CNC. We do this content all the time on the channel so please consider subscribing, ringing that bell, very important these days, and let's go ahead and get on with the video. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Roof Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today is part two of my introduction to CNC video series, where we walk through the different parts of the CNC machine. And I wanna start off the conversation by actually going through the different types of machines you might encounter in your travels. And then I'll jump over to the machine that I have over here in the corner here, and actually walk you through the different parts of the machine, talk about what they're called. So when you hear these terms, when you're learning about CNC and CNC operations, they will be familiar to you and you will understand what the terms are and how they apply to the machine and why it's important to understand what their names are and how they relate to each other. There are two fundamental different types of designs for digital manufacturing machines, CNC machines, and 3D printers. And they come in the form of a Cartesian-based system and a Delta-based system. Now, what a Cartesian-based system is, it is a machine that is based on the X, Y, and Z axes where you move the machine around left and right, back and forth, and up and down. Now, all of the machine's motions are interpreted to left and right, back and forth, and up and down. With a Cartesian machine, you generally have three independent axes that move based on the motion that the computer is commanding it to do. With a Delta machine, you usually have three or four arms that move the machine. Now with a Delta machine, generally speaking, the head that is moving is significantly smaller and more lightweight than something that a Cartesian machine might have. Therefore, the Delta machine can usually move quicker than a Cartesian machine. However, the computations required to compute the exact location in a Delta machine is significantly higher and reproducing accuracy and precision with a Delta machine is more difficult than with a Cartesian machine. So for this reason, you generally see CNC machines that are in some form of a Cartesian support system rather than a Delta machine. With 3D printing, however, though, you do see a fair number of 3D printers that are Delta as well as 3D printers that are Cartesian. So you kind of have a mix in there because the print head is generally much lighter than a router or a spindle for a CNC machine. With that basic knowledge, let's go ahead and move over to the machine and let's talk about the different parts. Let's start by discussing the basic geometry of the machine. So what we have here are a series of rails. So we have the rail right here and the rail on the other side. This allows the machine to move back and forth. We have another rail system here that allows this portion of the machine to move left and right. And we have a third rail system right here that allows this part of the machine to move up and down. So I'm going to walk through each one of these parts individually and talk about what they do. This particular rail system here allows the machine to move back and forth in the Y direction in the Cartesian coordinate system. Because of that, it is called the Y gantry or just simply the Y axis. This particular machine has a Y rail system on the left side of the machine and on the right side of the machine to allow the top rail system to move back and forth. There are various drive mechanisms for the different CNC routers out there. In this particular case, the Onefinity comes with a screw drive system. Other machines might come with a belt drive system and a series of pulleys. And the other option that you're likely to run into is a rack and pinion system that is usually found in higher end machines and large format machines because it is easier to scale the rack and pinion system to great distances. Whereas with something like a screw drive or even a belt drive system, there really are limits to how long you can make this screw and how long you can make the belts and still retain a great deal of precision and accuracy. 
So one of the main problems with a belt driven system is that if you put too much torque in the machine or if you try to move too quickly through material, the belt could potentially slip on this pulley losing steps. Now because this is not a closed loop system, the computer doesn't really know where the machine is. So if you lose steps, the computer doesn't know that and what will happen is you will end up cutting in the wrong location for all subsequent operations. This rail system here runs across the machine and it allows the machine to move left and right in the X direction. Because of this, it is called the X gantry or simply the X axis. The final set of rail systems for this particular machine happen to be these rails right here and that allows the router here to move up and down in the Z direction. Because of this, this is called the Z gantry or the simply the Z axis and sometimes otherwise known as a Z slider depending on what the particular mechanism is that the rail system is built upon. Most entry level CNC machines come with some sort of router to serve as the mechanism to remove the material in a subtractive manufacturing process. In this particular case, I happen to have a Makita router. Now on my X-Carve, I did have a DeWalt router. In most professional CNC machines and higher grade CNC machines, you will have a variable frequency drive spindle system that actually does the movement that allows the material to be removed from the bit here, which is connected to the base of the router. So. Therefore, sometimes the router on these machines is also called a spindle. So we use these terms interchangeably, router or spindle, to refer to the mechanism that turns the bit to remove the material for the CNC operations. Part of the router or spindle system of your CNC is going to be your actual cutting bit. In this particular case, I do have a flattening bit in my router. Part of the router configuration is the collet system here, which holds the bit into place. And the shank of the bit, which is right here, goes up into the collet. You tighten the collet, and that is what holds your bit into place. There's many different forms of collets that you can get for your router or for your CNC spindle. I won't go into all of them here. But in this case, the Makita router came with a 1 quarter inch collet and I have ordered a 1 8 inch collet for it as well to take smaller bits. And so if you're gonna be doing a lot of precision work, I do recommend getting the smaller collet so that you can have smaller bits with a smaller shank. The mechanical component that actually allows the machine to move in this particular machine is this stepper motor. Now most entry level and hobbyist level machines do use stepper motors to control the motion of the machine. In higher end machines you might find servo motors in particular that are allow a greater degree of accuracy and precision, but mostly stepper motors are used not only in hobbyist grade CNC machines, but also in 3D printers. Some entry level CNC machines offer a dust collection system like the one that I have on my Onefinity here. I had a similar system on my X-Carve as well. This happens to be a boot that you can remove easily via magnets that allow access to the bit and the router mechanism, but also protects your workpiece from the particles that are created as you're removing them. And so this one in particular is fixed location relative to the workpiece. It's adjustable with these little arms and you can move it up and down. Some dust collection systems are actually attached to the router, so that they actually move up and down as the bit is raised and lowered. Each has their both benefits and their not so awesome qualities, but in this particular case, I happen to like the one that does not move with the router because you can set the height of the dust collection system to the workpiece and you'll know that it won't move as the system is cutting and the bit is going deeper and deeper into your material. The heart of any CNC machine is the control system. In this particular case, the control system for the Onefinity is contained within this external box. It contains a drive system for the stepper motors and then a computer 
that allows the user to interact with the CNC through a monitor or a screen that is external to the unit. Most hobbyist level systems do not come with any sort of human machine interface and they require a computer to be tethered to the control system to tell the machine what to do. So in this case, the Onefinity is actually a step above most entry level machines by creating this additional option where you can actually control the machine directly with the user interface. The control system has the wires here that connect to the motor. This particular one has an emergency stop button on the top here. So if you get into some situation where the machine is not doing what you expect it to do and you need to stop it very quickly, you can press the button and it'll cut the power to the control system of the CNC and stop its motion immediately. As I mentioned, the Onefinity does have this touch screen interface that allows you to interact with the controller through this interface. In addition to the touch screen here, the Onefinity actually has an embedded computer within it that is connected to the network via Wi-Fi or through an Ethernet cable. And you can interact with the CNC via a browser on your computer rather than using this touch screen if you choose to do so. The touch screen and the interaction through a web page is an advanced feature that a lot of the entry level CNC machines do not have. So if you do wanna make the extra investment in something like the Onefinity, there are a number of benefits to doing so over other machines like perhaps the Shapeoko or the X-Carve. A major component of any CNC machine is the work holding system. So in this particular case, I have a spoil board, otherwise known as a waste board system here, made out of MDF that I can use to clamp down my work material and allow the machine to perform its operations. Some machines come with a waste board system already installed, and some machines, like the Onefinity, didn't have anything provided, so I created my own. There's a lot of different options to construct your waste board system or your work holding system. And so I won't go through all the options here, but just know that you have plenty of options and how you want to hold down your machine. And even with a system like this, you don't have to clamp it down. You can use double-sided tape and a couple other options, which we'll probably cover in a future video. So stay tuned for the entire series. All right, well, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of work to put together, but I hope you got something useful out of it. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up anyway, but please leave your comments down below. Tell us why, and we will try to make future videos better. If you have not already subscribed to us, please consider doing so. Ringing that bell, very important these days. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this that become future videos. Once again, thank you so much for getting this far. Thank you for watching the video, and don't forget to be inspired. If you have not already subscribed to us, please subscribe. Okay, so this particular waste board is just a bunch of strips with some T-track in between it. Other waste boards might be completely flat with holes in it for clamping down material or holes for something like a dog hole or something like that. I chose to go with the T-track because after having the individual holes with screw hold downs, I realized that uh, the screws were sometimes in the wrong locations or they weren't appropriate for the type of material I was trying to use. So I thought maybe the T-Track might be a little bit better. In this particular case, the One Infinity does not come with a waste board, so you have to make your own. And that does give you a fair amount of flexibility, but it also makes it a little bit, that barrier entry just a little bit higher for novice users or new CNC users. <clears throat> Thanks for coming in to visit. That was nice of you. What were you barking at outside? Hmm? It's a little too early for the mailman. There's another puppy out there. Hmm? Maybe some squirrels, some birds. No, you just felt like parking. Some people's walking by, huh? You want to get down and you want to go back and go lay down? Okay, go puppy so I can finish this video. Can I finish the video? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Okay, off. Go girl. Out. Good girl. Good girl. Go lay down. Out. Good girl. Lay down. Oh, I see your tail wagging. Oh, yes. There it goes. There it goes. Nope.
I know. Say it. <laughs> Come on. Okay. You need some love and affection. You haven't gotten any all day. Is that what it is? You've been sleeping. You've been resting on the couch. Look at that. You see that right there? That's a camera. Hmm? Hmm? Thank you. My chin was definitely dirty. Oh! Oh! Well, didn't appreciate that. You want to get down? Just go crawl. Oh, okay. Go lay down. <laughs>